back to another episode of the Stephanie Gately Show. I'm Rafael Lea, joined by Daniel DiOrio, as well as head coach Stephanie Gately. Fordham had just got back from break, classes that is, just got back from break. So we're back from break on the Stephanie Gately Show. Luckily for this Looking Back segment, we don't have to look back very far because Fordham has not been on break, the Fordham Rams team. They have actually gone 5-0 and in conference play to conclude a seven-game win streak or to keep going with this seven-game win streak. They have a game against Dayton on Wednesday. But first, let's look back, Coach. I don't want to go back too far, but I do want to point to the holiday tournament. How much do you think of that as sparking a, a right amount of spark right before conference play? I mean, it was a huge test because two days you know, prior to leaving for Christmas, Mary went down. And Mary, to me, is our X factor and, and on a real important piece of our puzzle. So it was just readjusting again. It feels like it's been a year of readjustment, you know, just due to kids being out. So it's like next man up. And um, so I was really proud of the kids of how we came out against Hartford. Hartford, you know, is a real solid team. The whole, you know, the whole tournament was a group of teams that were all above 500, having very strong seasons. So we knew it was going to be any game that we played. It was going to be difficult. It was hard to pick who to open up with. And we came out and really set the tone early against Hartford and then backed that up with a really, really good win over a very, very good West Coast team in UC Davis. Seven-game win streak now. How do you prep such a young team for, to, to continue winning? You know, we had a long conversation after the VCU game because I just feel like there's a difference between being confident and being cocky. And I just feel like we've, we've taken, you know, winning lightly, not as coaches, but as, you know, some of the younger players – it's not that easy. We, we've we been fortunate to face, you know, the easier, if you call anything easier, part of our schedule because we've had a lot of home games. And so the road's only going to get harder. I mean, last year we started off strong in conference, and then we went on the road and lost four straight. And so there's no easy game in the conference. And so for us, we really kind of had to have an attitude adjustment after the VCU game and kind of set the record straight for what Fordham basketball is. And we're going to be talking to Jamaris Davis as well as Bree Cavanaugh. So I want to talk to you ab about Bree Cavanaugh, redshirt freshman, certainly not playing like this is her first, like this is her freshman year. So what have you seen in terms of her development, and how important has that been to a team that's missing Kate Crislina this season? I mean, just so much growth. I mean, if you looked at us at the foreign tour and, and saw, you know. Brie struggling, you know, in the first couple games just to kind of find her identity on the team and to find her way back after being out from basketball for a couple of years. So then the first two games, you know, if you look back on our first two games, it certainly wasn't anywhere near the reflection of the Brie that we're seeing now. So there's just continued growth. I see her g gaining confidence with every game. And then I see her adding a dimension to every game. So I got on her a little bit about getting on the rebounds and attacking the offensive boards. And, and so I just think she has a lot more in her than she realizes. And I'm just trying to push those buttons. But she's responded really well to the challenge. Averaging 19.5 points a game over the last two games three-time Rookie of the Week now in the A-10. How much of that success do you attribute to the fact that she had an extra year to develop as she sat out last season? I mean, I think it, it's a couple things. One, obviously, it's it's sitting out and learning the system. You know, and we tried to tailor our system according to what the talent we have. I mean, I think that's a big part of it. But you get awards when your team's successful. I mean, if your team's 0-5, you're not being acknowledged. You know, so, and I tell the kids all the time, individual accolades will come through team success. So I think a lot of the rewards are a result of the fact that we won those games. And so, um, you know, Bree is an older, as we know, an older freshman. But, this, you know, the result is she has not had not been on the court for two years. So I think it took a little bit of time for her to get adjusted. But I think she's, you know, she's now on the upswing. And this is a difficult question for me because... This team does, we've mentioned this time and time again, go seven deep and really relies on the performance on Holden, Jamaris, and Bree Kavanaugh. But in terms of developing Zara Jillings, uh, Kendall Haramaya, Haley Gillis, how, it, has it been at least a little important that you've had to deal with this? I know it's not an ideal situation to lack the depth and you've always want to have more. But can you see any positive from it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, because I think those kids are getting valuable minutes. You know, like when Haley was out, you know, we had to develop other kids. And now with Mary being out, we've had to develop those kids. And they're getting meaningful minutes and they're learning through their mistakes. And they're, they're you know, getting more mature as players on the court. So without a doubt, you find some positive in it. 
So five of your top seven players being freshmen. Are you are you content with the way they've played thus far? And moving forward, what developments need to be worked on? Uh, I mean, I'm thrilled. I mean, just because, like, the operative word there is freshmen. If you had said to me we'd be 14 and 4 and our five of our top seven are freshmen, I'd be saying, well, Dan, what drugs, are you, what drugs are you doing? You know, <laughs> but um, the fact is it's – you know, these kids have grown in practice. I think we've had great leadership from our captains with G, Mary, and Lauren. Um, and I think there's a combination of things that has a lot to do with the freshmen getting mature. It helps because Bree and G have carried a lot of the scoring load, but then Lauren has come in, and Joey's had some really solid games. And, and you know, Kendall and Zara, we, we're trying to make that one player, you know, that one player that can kind of come in and be steady, you know, for us on both ends of the court. And, Coach, you weren't? absolutely exuberant after that VCU game on the road. It was a win. But tell me about that game, along with the Davidson game, where your team kind of struggled at the beginning. What lessons do you take from that as you move on now to as you, what you described as now the most cha more challenging part to the A-10 schedule? I mean, as a coach, I've been there before, so I know what I need out of them. It's really the lessons they take because – you know, I had a couple meetings after that VCU game because I saw us being a little selfish. I saw us not paying attention to detail. We got a 13-point lead, and all of a sudden we decided to do what we want and not pay attention to what got us there and not putting teams away. So um, we had to come back and really realign ourselves on, on what Fordham basketball is, and, and, and I think the meetings were very, very productive, and I think people took personally, you know, in a good way, you know, the, the challenges I gave them, and, you know, I, hopefully that will be reflected in tomorrow's game against Dayton. During that VCU game, Jamaris Davis recorded her 1,000th rebound. Was that something she was, one, aware of, and two, was that a goal of hers to complete this season? Oh, I'm sure. I mean, I don't know if she's aware of it. I'm, I'm sure she probably is just because there is a countdown on everything, but I don't think she was aware when she got it in the game. Right. Um, that accomplishment alone is incredible. I mean, just to be the second person in hi history behind Ann Gregory to accomplish it, that's a, that's a very difficult accomplishment. And, I think if you had told me or G her freshman year that that would happen, we wouldn't have been quite sure, you know, just because she was a raw, very talented, but a very raw player with a lot to learn. And I've challenged her because she's obviously a very good defensive rebounder, but I think sometimes she takes time off and takes breaks on the offensive end. And, I, and you know, and she could be as an effective offensive rebounder. So we've kind of put that challenge to her. Um, but she's obviously, you know, left her name in the record books and, and will go down as one of the best players to put on a Fordham uniform. And how good – is Jamaris Davis, not just on the court. Jamaris Davis in practice. Jamaris Davis as a role model, really, for this young team in general. Well, I mean, that's one of the challenges I had for G. I mean, she got a little frustrated in the VCU game and started biting back to the officials, and I said, unacceptable. I will deal with the officials. You're a leader. Your, your players will follow your lead. So, you know, you've got to stay focused, regardless of how your game's going, because I think – if you look at scoring-wise, she struggled the last two games, and she's forced a little bit. And I said, you've got to trust in your teammates. You know, if you've got two people on you, you're probably going to get it right back. You know, you're going to make it easier for you if you can open up the inside by getting other people shot. So she was very open to that and, and, and really just was great about listening to – I said, you know, I'm trying to get you ready for the next level too. You've got to show that you're a willing passer. To me, the hardest teams to defend are, are the post players that can pass. So she has the ability to do it. She just needs to now showcase that. Well, Coach, we'll talk to you again in a bit when we look ahead toward the Dayton game. But first, let's go on the court with Bree Cavanaugh and Jamaris Davis. Back now with Jamaris Davis and Bree Cavanaugh. Back now with Jamaris Davis and Bree Cavanaugh. Girls, thank you for joining us. And uh, I told you, G, last time you were on, next time we talk to you, you might have another record or something set and, you know, just because you had to do it, pulling down a rebound with, what, 10 seconds left against VCU? Yeah. 1,000 rebounds, so how's that? Oh, it feels great, um, especially knowing, like, you know, that's not something that people do all the time. You know, you hear all the time about people getting 1,000 points, but 1,000 rebounds, you don't really hear about it that much. And I take great pride in, you know, boxing out and going to get rebounds, so it feels good to be acknowledged for that. 1,000 points now and 1,000 rebounds. Is there one that means more to you than the other? I think a thousand rebounds means a lot more to me than a thousand points. Because wow. rebounding takes a lot of heart. Everybody can't do that. Yeah. So I, I, think I, I know I can't. So. Yeah, I think I'm more proud about the rebounds. Both and of them are great accomplishments. Oh, though. absolutely. And then Bree, you're now three time rookie of the week for the Atlantic Ten. 
how far do you think you've come this season? Obviously, a redshirt freshman. You're not playing like you should have the word freshman in your name. So how's that been, the development? <clears throat> I mean, developing has been it's been fun because, you know, my teammates push me, especially G. I call her big dog, and she calls me little pup. So I'm <laughs> trying, to, trying to follow in G's footsteps. But, I mean, you know, with the team and the, their support, it kind of helps, and it kind of um, helps me with my confidence level as well. So last year you were one of the most vocal players on the bench, really firing up your squad. Now paying dividends on the floor. What has that transition been like in your first uh, semester? Um, the transition has been pretty smooth. I mean, in the beginning, you know, I was a little nervous, you know. So I guess the first couple of games, you know, I was trying to, you know, get the jitters out. But then after that, you know, everything has been, you know, going smoothly and um, pretty well. well. I do want to go through a little bit of the chemistry here just between you two because obviously – Two of them are uh, mainstay in the Fordham lineup. Obviously, you guys and Lauren Holden go pretty hand in hand. But on the court, it seems like you guys are always there when there's a when there's a, a rebound. Obviously, Jamaris Davis has the size advantage, but you're always skying up there, Bree, getting getting your hand near there. So, what's that like on the court? First of all. Um, on the court, it's like, I don't even know. My life kind of flashes before my eyes. You know, <laughs> I go for the rebound. I see G. I'm like, oh, oh. I'm like, go ahead, go ahead, G. Take it, take it. <laughs> but I mean, like. You know, rebounding is, you know, hard, but, you know, it takes a lot of effort and it takes boxing out. And, you know, of course, G has a size, a size advantage, so that also, you know, helps. Because then I could just pass it off to G. Like, hey, G, take it. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Bree are constantly fighting for rebounds on the court. <laughs> so that's great having, a, you know, having another guard, just being able to crash and be that aggressive on the boards to help me out when I can't get them. So that's really helpful. I think we were both impressed by Bree's rebounding in that VCU game. I think we mentioned that on air a couple of times, point guard getting underneath the basket. Definitely impressive, but also impressive. Jamaris, your second straight back-to-back A-10 player of the week, another award. First time in program history that that has happened. How much does that mean to you? Uh, I try a lot not to focus on, you know, oh, player of the week. Or, Of course, it means a lot to me. It's great. Um, but, you know, I just try to keep my focus on myself and my teammates, keeping us focused on the games ahead, um, working hard in the gym, every practice. Um, so those are the type of things I try to focus on. But, of course, it does feel really good to be acknowledged for the things that I do. With the help of my teammates, of course. And we saw you taking great leadership in VCU before the game, during the shoot-around, really rallying up your team and telling them just how important this game was. Now, moving forward, you're facing Dayton next. How do you do that same thing and, and keep your team focused? I don't even think I need to do it. <laughs> These last two practices after we played VCU, we've been completely locked in and focused on the details, you know, just doing the little things. Energy has been great. The intensity has been great. We're battling you know, these last two days of practices has been have been very, very intense. So I just think everybody's locked in and ready for this game. You know, we're fighting for first place. There's no way we're going to let somebody come on our court and take it from us. And Bree, now uh, one of the freshmen that have had such a big impact on this team in a year that I'm sure Coach didn't want the freshmen to have this kind of an impact, and you've kind of been at the at the forefront of this five-game winning streak in the Atlantic 10, 5-0, and seven-game win streak overall so what's that ride been from a freshman's perspective um from a freshman's perspective i mean i don't really consider myself a freshman only because yeah i, I know here it's last tough year. right you know i was here last year so i knew you know what to expect um you know what plays we were going to be running and um you know all the different you know details that you know coach tells us to be focused and locked in and so it's it's i mean i guess i, I guess i'm kind of not used to it but i'm kind of familiar with it so you you mentioned with uh, you know obviously sitting out last year. How much did that extra year um, give give you extra time to develop, and how much did that help you? Oh, it helped. It helped a lot because I'm I'm pretty sure if I was to come in as like you know I guess a, a normal freshman, it would definitely be tough. It mm -hmm. would definitely be tough. So I think you know being here last year, like it it definitely helped, and it definitely like you know helped me take the right step forward. And then looking back now, you have. Dayton coming up, they were preseason ranked number one. You were preseason ranked fifth. Coming into the season, lo losing Kate Chrislina. Obviously, Mary Golding hasn't been on the court as much as I'm sure everyone would like. And just all that kind of piling on top of each other. And now here you are against Dayton, two undefeated sides. Are you guys as surprised as I'm sure maybe Dayton is preparing for this game that you're in this situation? Um, no, I'm not. I'm not. Um, the returning players, we already had a chip on our shoulders. Like, what? We're ranked fifth. 
But, I mean, it's understandable with the players that we've lost. But, you know, we came in with a chip on our shoulders. Um, we worked our butts off all summer session. And we, when we came in, we made sure that the freshmen knew what was expected of them. We demanded from them every day in practice. And, you know, we got a chance to kind of mesh um, and find ourselves a little bit with um, the foreign tour. So that helped us out a lot. And I knew, you know, from the first day we stepped on the court with each other that we were going to be able to do f um, some special things because even though we're playing a lot of freshmen, they don't play like freshmen, you know. They play like – they play with confidence. They play like they have experience. So it's not like, you know – I'm on a court and I have to keep teaching, 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 teaching because, you know, they, they've picked up a lot of things that, you know, some normal freshmen wouldn't have because they had to step up in a lot of different ways. And, you know, they're holding their own. So I'm not surprised at all with the position we're in right now. Well, girls, thank you guys for joining us. And obviously good luck against Dayton, all right? A home game, as you mentioned, Jay. And uh, one of you guys are not going to be undefeated after it. So good luck. Dayton. I know you guys are going to have <laughs> – <laughs> No, you guys are going to have play with uh, some extra fire in your hair, right? Mm -hmm. um, now let's go look ahead to that Dayton game with head coach Stephanie Gately. Back with coach, looking forward to the Dayton game on Wednesday. And coach, on a seven-game win streak, we've mentioned it, 5-0 and in conference. Just how significant is this game against Dayton? I mean, it's, you know, every game has been a challenge. But, of course, you know, this is now first place on the line, you know, with, with – one of the three, you know, we're one of the three undefeated teams left in conference. And so, you know, and we beat Dayton ho at home last year. So, obviously, you know, with their point guard did not play. So, Burdett will be, you know, obviously suited up. And she just had 33 against St. Louis. So, I think, that, you know, they'll be ready to come in and prove themselves. They start three seniors and a junior. And so, I mean, similar to what we saw in St. Louis. You know, just a very experienced team. Um, but our kids are used to that. And we're ready for the challenge. And uh, the number one thing is we've got to keep them off the boards. Again, one of the early tests for your Fordham Rams, a young Fordham team. How do you pre prepare such a young team for a tough A-10 opponent like Dayton? I mean, we brought in scout squad, and I think our scout squad kind of, you know, they simulate a lot of what we'll see with just athletic. And, and you know, the one thing in, in watching their St. Louis game, they just pound them on the boards. I mean, their four and their five each had eight offensive rebounds. I mean, that's 16. When there's games that we go with we don't have – 16 offensive rebounds, let alone with between two players. So, you know, they get a lot of second chance opportunities, and I think that's what put St. Louis away, and so that's obviously been the point of emphasis for us. Is it different preparing a team that's this young with so many freshmen on the team, or would you would you approach it differently had this been a veteran bunch? No, same way, street fight. You know, it's it's on our street. You know, we got to protect ourselves on our street, and we got to come out ready to fight. There, There's, uh, there's going to be a lot of – you know, opportunities for loose balls. There's going to be a lot of opportunities for the 50-50 the balls, and we got to win them. And just taking a step back now, I know you're so focused on this game as it stands right now, but taking a step back and looking back, preseason had them ranked number one, had you guys at number five. Did you? Is it amazing to find yourself in this situation where they are where they were supposed to be? They're at the top, undefeated, but there you are right alongside them, and now they're playing for you. I think it's it's more – from a standpoint of what we've had to deal with to get here, you know, with Snate being out, Mary being out, Haley being out, just all the obstacles that hit us to still be able to overcome those obstacles and be in this position. I think not so much, I think we have the talent, but having the youth we have and had the injuries we've had, you know, I, I'm just really pleased where we're at, but I'm not satisfied. There's a difference. So you, so you mentioned that you're not satisfied. In terms of the freshmen, what do you think that they need to do to take their game to the next level? I just think, you know, decision-making. I think right now, like, it's just the freshmen, you know, they'll see with Dayton, you know, this is going to be a playoff-type game, you know, just the you know, intensity. We saw it with St. Louis. You know, it was an intense, intense, you know, 40 minutes of basketball. And, you know, because there's so much youth, they have nothing to compare it to. So they have no idea. They've never played Dayton. Um, and, you know, Dayton's been somebody that's been kind of the benchmark, of, you know, of the Atlantic 10 for a number of years. So, you know, for our kids, it's, it's you know, round one, and we just need to, you know, come out punching. And then you hear this a lot. A young team needs to learn how to win and learn how to win big games like this. What, is that, what does that mean exactly to you and to this team in particular? Well, they've done it. You know, we've already done it. UC Davis, you know, that was a big game, a championship-type game. 
we've done it with St. Louis, you know, so, and they were, you know, for starting four seniors. And so we, we've actually answered that call. You know, it's just now it's just there's going to be more calls. I mean, the more you win, the harder it is. You know, when you're on top, you are a target, and people are coming after you. You know, right now, you know, from last time I looked, we have the highest RPI. So Dayton, you know, is, is you know is going to try to yeah, – obviously they, they want to take that over, you know, because the RPI is critical at the end of the year. So, you know, we know what, what this game means. But I think the more you try to put on the game and making it, you know, you know it, it be all, end all – I, you know, with freshmen, you can't do that. You just got to say, hey, listen, we're going to take one possession at a time. We're going to be the best we can be for 40 minutes, and then we'll figure out where we are after the game. Fordham playing very well at the Rose Hill Gym. Uh, how much is home court advantage a factor in a tough matchup like this one? I think it's comfort level. I think anytime you're at home, there's a comfort level involved, whether it's, you know, your own bed, your fans, you know, your own baskets. So, I mean, being at home definitely definitely is a big part of it. You know, the, the hard part is at the end of the year, we're going to be on the road against four of the top teams. So, you know, we got to learn to protect our court at home while we can. And then you mentioned Burdett, the point guard. She's coming off a player of the week honor. You have Jamaris Davis coming off a two consecutive player of the week honors. Both had career games against St. Louis. Both play completely different positions on the court. But is there is there something you've seen in Jamaris Davis where this is a kind of matchup she just really looks forward to, not just against the team, but against an individual? I mean, it's hard because there's so such different positions. Burdett can control the ball and make decisions. G's got to rely on somebody getting her the ball. So that that's, that's different in a lot of ways. And Burdett's got a senior-laden team around her. That's completely different, too. And you've got, you know, your four and your five are seniors, and you've played with them for four years. That makes a huge difference. You know, I think the comfort level has improved and increased with her and Bree and with her and Lauren. Um, but, you know, like, again, we're, st we're still learning. You know, we're still growing. We're, we're, we haven't peaked. We're not where we need to be. Once we get Mary back, we'll, we'll kind of shift again and, and rotate again and be a little bit different. And then hopefully in the last two weeks of you know, the season, we'll be ready to peak come tournament time. So earlier today on the Fordham Women's Basketball Twitter page, a video was uploaded. <laughs> So guys, just some things that came up, and you know, my number one thing is obviously in the best interest of the team, okay? So, you know, my thing is I gotta make decisions, sometimes they're hard, sometimes they're easy. Um, so, you know, before we go any further and decide, you know, about, you know, being on the bench and everything tonight, you know, it's just... Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Just what happened. No, go, go. Yeah, there's, you know, there's something I just wanted to make sure I went over with you. Um, I've met with Janan about this, I've met with Catherine about it. Um, because I'm sitting on a few extra scholarships for this year, the second semester, you all have a scholarship. So just no! This, I can only no. guarantee it for this semester. Just because no, no way! Oh my God, I'm about to cry! I'm about to cry, thank you so much! Can you tell us a little bit about that and what went into that? Oh my God, Dan, so, um, you know, Two of my sons, DC and Coop, you know, actually Dutch end up walking on at Temple, but all three have played that role. And it's 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 not an easy role, you know, because you've got to come in every day knowing that you probably will never get in the game, you know, unless you're up a lot or down a lot. So, you know, I was sitting because of, you mentioned Kate and Anna not coming back, and it happened so late, we, we weren't going to just replace them with people we, we didn't know. So those scholarships were sitting there, and I just felt I wanted to wait a semester just to see if they proved themselves. You know, I mean, Kristen has been here, so she's obviously done it, but I don't know if I'm going to be in that position again to have that money. And so for me, rather than sit on it, I'd rather reward them and let them know. So the night before, I was just like, <laughs> I felt so bad. I was sitting with D.C. and my husband. They're like, yeah, tell them it's, you have a meeting. And so I, I, I text them, like, we're going to um, meet each individually. I want to meet, meet with you tomorrow. So, of course, they all get into each other. Like, did you get text? And they're like, what's it about? I said, we'll just worry about it tomorrow. And, like, and that's so unlike me because I'm, <laughs> like, it's not, it's not my personality to be like that. Then on top of it, when they came in, Coach Sonia said, they said, what's going on? They're like, I don't know. I've never seen Coach this mad. So, I mean, the, the drama had obviously <laughs> built up. And so, I was, and I, meanwhile, I'm feeling horrible now because I'm like, they come in and, and they're, like, scared. You know, like, they're, they look scared. They look like they're in fear. So, I started off the meeting, like, guys, as a head coach, you have to make some really difficult decisions. And it was, you know, it was our opening game. And I'm like, you know, I've met with the administration on this, and I think it's in our best interest, you know, since you guys have done a great job to uh, give you a full scholarship. In second. And they're all like, what? And they start, two of them start crying. Uh, Kristen didn't know what to say. <laughs> so it was one of the most satisfying things, you know, that you get to do. And, you know, I'm fortunate that Dave Roach gave me the okay to do it. And 
Um, I'm thankful that they, we have the opportunity to do that because it also helped our players at our own scholarship see the reaction of kids that aren't mm -hmm. and, and really what it means, you know, to, to not – it's not a sense of entitlement. It is a privilege to be on scholarship, and uh, and that uh, it was so nice to see kids genuinely appreciate that opportunity. Well, that's as good of a note to end the show on as any. And as always, thank you, to Coach Gately, as well as our guest, Jamaris Davis. Now, that's a three.